extra is on using Google Apps Classroom or using Google Moderator in the classroom and associated with Google Apps for Education and is led by Google Certified Teacher and Google Apps for Education Certified Trainer Wendy Gordon. A few things before we get started. If you have questions about the webinar, please ask them in the Q&A box. So for questions, put them in the Q&A box. This is so that everybody can see the question and the answer. And we'll be sending out the transcript to the question and answer after the webinar. We'll also be recording this webinar, so you'll be able to access the recording and share it, the video link with anybody else or rewatch it for yourself. Again, throughout the webinar, if you have questions, you can ask them in the Q&A box. I know that Wendy will also be leaving time at the end to answer questions as well. So I'm going to give Wendy the ability to share her presentation. Dana, just making sure that you can hear me okay with my audio. Yes, loud and clear. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Well, as Dana mentioned, uh, my name is Wendy Gorton. I'm a Google Certified Teacher and a Google Apps Certified Trainer, um, which is a wonderful program that can um, help us spread training of Google Apps for Education around the U.S. and around the world. And it's a wonderful network. Um, of trainers that we learn from and uh, get a lot of ideas from. And Dana is um, our fearless leader and part of the Google Apps Marketing uh, K-12 through team. Um, and will be um, helping us through the webinar today. Just making sure, Dana, can uh, you see my screen okay? Yes. Fantastic. Okay, so like Dana said, if you have any questions, pop those in the box uh, right then. We'll be able to get to them at the end and throughout the presentation. Uh, so welcome to the webinar. The first thing I want to um, shoot over to is you're welcome to um, click on that link or go to goo.gl slash db9gl, and that will take you to a resource page. As um, the tool where you get it, um, a neat little flashcard that um, has things uh, that, that are classroom examples of how you can use Google Moderator, um, a training module that you can view, uh, taking you step by step through a lot of the things that we're going to go over today. So if, if it is whizzing by really fast, you're not because there's some really good screenshots, links, and steps how you can get this set up in your classroom tomorrow if you wanted to. Um, we also have um, a link to the presentation as well as um, the Google Moderator that we'll be using today. So this can be your home base for some resources for Google Moderator that you can um, access that link uh, after today if you'd like to. And just for an introduction to see who's out there, uh, we really appreciate you coming out uh, on your afternoon after lunch and um, taking part in learning how to use new exciting tools in your classroom environment. So if you want to go ahead and put in the chat box right now so we can see um, maybe where you're from and what role you have in education. If you're a teacher, administrator, librarian, uh, tech editor, whatever you might be, that gives us kind of an idea of um, who we're talking with today and maybe how we can deal with this tool to your needs. So I'll give everyone a second to put in who they are out there. Wendy, are you dialing on your cell phone or over the internet? My cell phone. Am I breaking up a tad? Because I'm hearing you guys pretty clear. Yeah, it, it seems like you're breaking up a little bit, but uh, maybe it's just me. If anybody else is listening, if you could type in the chat box or the Q&A box if you're having any trouble hearing Wendy, we can also see if we can get her to uh, to, to dial in on a different line. It does seem, Wendy, like you're, you're gargling a little bit. Um, do you think that you could try dialing into the WebEx using a different format? I can send okay. you the, the number. Um, and that way, we can, I see we're already getting some responses in. So um, everybody can take a moment to uh, type themselves in. And I'll try on another line. Thanks, Dana. Oh, you, know what? you know what, actually, Wendy? You're sounding just fine right now. Maybe it was just that moment. Okay, if it happens again, I've got the chat box up. Let me know, and it should probably only take about 20 seconds to reconnect. Uh, good right now? now? Uh, so, yeah. So, I've okay. got a couple people coming in from, uh, we've got 
Dirk from Maine. He's a technology support leader. We also have um, a technology grader for two schools in the UK. Um, and, and I think that you're able to see some of the other ones as well. Yeah, we've got somebody from our most recent Google Teacher Academy uh, coming out uh, from the Carolina. We've got tech coordinator um, coming out from Arkansas, grad student um, out in Haiti. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, we've got a teacher from New York. Uh, so it looks like we've got people from all across the scope of education. And for tech coordinators, we'll try to see how um, you can set this up for teachers and and for administrators at your school and for teachers, we hope that you can get this going in your classroom for a variety of different educational applications. So thanks for piping everybody and letting us all know who's out there, where we're coming from, and it's it's very nice to have an international crowd. And Yeah, I'm good. I think you're okay right now. All right. Good. Thanks everybody for participating in that. So now you know a little bit about um, who you are. Uh, this is our project for today. Uh, we're going to go over what exactly is Moderator, what is this tool, um, and go through a demo of not only a couple of really cool examples, uh, but how do you get there and how do you create one yourself? Uh, then we'll dive into some classroom examples, um, both the class level and administrator level, and then take it up to some advanced tips for one to you know, make a moderator series, uh, what are some things you can do to make it do more of what you want? Um, and then we'll wrap up with where to find this and other resources afterwards. And of course, as Dana said, time for questions um, that may come up throughout um, throughout the webinar. And let's see, is I showing a full screen? I just had somebody who, okay, Dana. Yeah, I was on mute, I realized. Uh, it looks like we're seeing um, kind of a slight double instance, but I think that you just dragged it larger, so we're seeing the, the full okay. presentation. I've got a smaller one um, hiding behind it, so great. And great agenda for today. And before we even go into kind of nuts and bolts of moderator, uh, Dana's got a really neat story about what Moderator is and how it came about. That's a lovely picture of me sleeping and um, a rocks in the Oregon forest, uh, but that's not a great place to fall asleep. It was a lovely day, but uh, not one of the best places in the world to fall asleep. And um, I know we've all been in, in meetings before where that's what we wanted to do is just lay down on our desk just like I am relaxing on that lovely rock. Um, but uh, I, my passion for moderator and uh, you know democratizing the classroom is uh, to not have this happen, whether it's our students or uh, our faculty in a meeting. And Dana's gonna tell us a little bit about uh, a Google engineer that sought to solve this problem. I wanna give a quick background on why Google Moderator was even created. So it actually was the project, the 20% project of a Google intern one summer. So one of the great perks of working at Google is that we're often able to bring in celebrated authors or politicians or other famous people to come and talk at Google. Uh, one of the downsides of working at Google is that everybody is pretty opinionated. So we have a lot of people who want to ask questions. And this intern was noticing that really the only way to determine who got to ask a question of these foreign terries or these authors was ever managed to line up, get up, and stand behind the mic and ask the questions. And lots of times those questions really weren't the most uh, uh, most interesting ones that could have been there. So we thought about building a tool where people got to submit questions and then the rest of everybody else who didn't submit a question or those who did could vote. And that way we could get the best questions to the top. So in this way, we could also get our participation from our international offices. So this way, our the uh, glares in our London office and our Singapore office could submit questions even if they were going to be in bed or just waking up when the actual speaker came. So it was a story of a 20% project that he developed it really just internally for Google and for these what we call tech talks. But then it evolved, it became so popular at Google that we evolved it into to Google Moderator and launched it first as a lab, now 
out the full product. So let's give a, a little background story of, of Google Moderator and how it how it started at Google. Basically, the idea of how can we get more pe people to participate, and how can we surface the best and most relevant information, like the best questions, to the top so that we're really getting everybody uh, uh, able to to, to get the most out of these presentations or other types of information. Thanks, and uh, that story really uh, illustrates um, kind of my interest, and I know a lot of um, our teachers out there who use technology uh, are really student-centered and helping giving uh, students voice and also helping them create, collaborate, and share with each other, and I mean, that's why I, I immediately gravitated towards moderators, because it does give students and faculty a chance to, to have their voice heard and to know that they have choice and opinions that can be uh, put into play in the classroom. And uh, part of what we'll look at today. And the basics of using a moderator is it's a website where you can create a series that holds different topics. Uh, and within that, you, people can ask questions, they can give suggestions, ideas, and essentially you take that page, that moderator series, and you can share that. Out. You can get a URL that can be put into an email out to your parents or your class website or your school website or even embedded into a site um, just as it is in the resource site that uh, I've given you today. And then finally, as the uh, moderator of the moderator, you get a chance to uh, present those if you're showing um, you know, to a meeting, showing it to your class to discuss about. And you can go back at any time and go through and answer it. So that's the basic anatomy of, of what this moderator uh, website is. And now go into and check out um, an actual really cool example of how it, it's been used. And democracy in action. Um, the White House uh, for the State of the Union actually used YouTube moderator together to give the people um, a voice. And then uh, President Obama actually answered the questions um, that were collected on moderator and voted on, and the most important ones that uh, people are interested in rose to the top. And you can see here um, that you know so over 700,000 votes on 14,000 questions um, from 64,000 people. So there was a lot of uh, participation in this. And it's a really cool way to see how moderator can be used to not only gather questions or answer questions like you might be used to with a discussion forum or thread, but you get this added level of interactivity in that people can um, vote for what they want, or they can even flag if they don't uh, approve of something or of being appropriate. Uh, appropriate. So I want to click on that link uh, or type it in. It should take you to the actual page where we can kind of float around and look at what exactly the moderator is. And you'll see right hand side, um, we've got a bunch of topics. Entire uh, page is what we call a series in Moderator. That it's basically a container that can hold, hold topic. It can hold a bunch of topics, like in this case. And, and you can see um, a description. Here. You can put a YouTube video in, and then a simple place where you can submit a question and view uh, past questions. Um, something really important is for an event like this, you don't want it to continue to um, catch questions long after the event especially in something as high profile as this. So show later how you can put start and end times onto uh, the moderator that, that you made. Going over to the right-hand side, then, you can click on different questions, and you'll see it's uh, letting you notice it over by saying for participation. And see um, everybody's put in their question or idea. You can if you want to put your bar, um, such as Sean from York. You can also do anonymously, which we'll look at examples later, uh, that can really help kind of break down barriers for shy students or people who might not be, um, you know, as excited about sharing, um, you know, thoughts about something. I put um, the resource link um, in the chat bar if you want to pop over and follow along without having to type those in quickly. Thanks, Dana. Um, so you'll see here um, we've got within each topic. You know, jobs in the economy, um, over 4,000 questions and 100,000 votes on them that made this one go to the top, um, which was Jim and Deanna wants to talk about the internet, um, which was really answered. So you scroll down and kind of see 
how it's ordered and, and the questions that are most popular rest of the top. And it's a really easy thumbs up or thumbs down vote for your students or teacher you. And a um, really nice way to, to collect uh, questions and feedback. Um, another interesting thing is that you can have uh, students and teachers post a, a video response as well, um, or a video or resource that relates to it or trying to um, what they're what they're talking about in, in their question or their suggestion. That they have. Well, you know, it seems like your uh, your audio is is breaking up a lot again. So I can talk a little bit more about the YouTube panel and moderator possibilities if you want to just try dial in really quickly again using a different method. I uh, I sent you over via um, uh, your Gmail chat. I put the teleconference for an event number. Great. Back. So we had a question here about the one for the State of the Union. Is it included on the main resource site? It should be linked there. You can also go to that YouTube site, youtube.com slash your State of the Union. Um, so what's interesting about this is moderators available in two kind of flavors. And, and uh, the this is one of them that that Wed is sharing is the YouTube version. It's our more recent one. Uh, so if you have a YouTube YouTube channel, or if your school or your class or somebody has a YouTube channel, you can actually integrate Google Moderator directly into the channel, just kind of like what uh, you're seeing here. This is actually a YouTube.com address. It's not our Google.com address. And the benefit of that is that you can include a video on the homepage um, and can also have it integrated with the rest of your channel and playlists and other videos. So, for example, you might create, create a channel on a certain subject. We're able to include links to other YouTube videos via some kind of playlist, and you'd be able to include in moderator perhaps a student discussion of what's going on around that particular topic after your students are able to look at the different videos. Um, a little bit more on the interface that you're seeing here. here. A thumbs up and thumbs down. So you'll see that the, it actually is able to tell how many people have thumbs up or thumbs down that a particular question. And it'll bring to the top the ones that have the most um, the, the most positive responses. So even though uh, some might have some negative responses, more negative responses than other ones, they've got more positive responses. So we do kind of end up bubbling those to the top. And to reiterate, if you want to, you can set a start and end time to the different types of moderator um, uh, a, a moderator series that you put together. So, for example, for the White House, they had weekly questions. So you could put together a weekly moderator series where you allow students on a weekly basis to submit topics on different um, lessons that are happening that week or different chapters. So you could also put, you know, whatever kind of start and end time that you want to have. So it looks like Wendy is back, but I don't see her yet in our, um, and when are you talking now? I'm not talking, but now I am. Oh. Can you hear me okay? Okay. Yes, we can hear great. All right. All right. Thanks, for um, a little bit more about um, the White House use of moderator. And thanks, everyone, for your patience as I get patched in. Do I sound pretty good now? It's much better. There. Fantastic. Okay. Well, let's keep going and pick out another um, example before we actually dive into one. And so again, this is uh, there's a link on here if you want to go back through and, and, and see how it played out. Um, another one is Tip Jar, um, which is a collection of money-saving tips that the entire web community um, uh, run together to put their suggestions in and vote and. Um, you can see uh, 19,000 people submitted, and if we click on it, we'll get to see a um, we can go a little bit more into the interface that Dana talked about, but you've got your kind of home page right here that has a description of what the moderator is, and you've got yourself down here, and that's how you appear to other people. Um, and again, you can always go as anonymous if the moderator allows for anonymous um, feedback. From here, on my left are all of my topics within a moderator series. So if you have one topic in a series, if I'm a teacher, I could have um, all of my topics here, you know, separated by class or debate or event or whatever it might be, or I can create a new series for different events 
or topics that I want. So you can start to kind of think about what are some ways you can organize your moderator series. But this is a cool example of um, taking a bunch of topics, kind of like um, the White House, and then inviting people inside to, to discuss and vote on those topics. So if we click on one on how you can save money at home, See way um, I get a chance right over here to choose. I can say somebody says uh, buy a smaller house from the simple dollar. Um, if I'm just kind of blowing through and I don't feel like voting, I can skip it. Um, or I can say I think it's a good question. I want to talk about this. Or I think this should rise to the top. I can say yes. Um, or I can say no. I'm not really into it. And so I say, yeah, that's a pretty good idea. See, the next question immediately pops up. So I can keep on cruising through, and just like your students would go through kind of all the review questions or debate questions that might be on the topic. And see, I can slide it inappropriate here. And this is great for helping to talk to your students about digital citizenship and being part of an online community is that they really get to help moderate, um, you know, the appropriateness of what's being put online. So it's, it's neat for you as a teacher and for parents to know that, um, you know, well, that uh, not you, but other students viewing it um, have a chance to make sure that things are staying appropriate on your moderator series. And I'll get to say, if I like something like right here, I, I can click on share, and you'll see I can make this a quick Twitter post or Facebook post or email it to somebody if I think it's a great idea and I want them to check it out. Um, and I can go through this topic. I can quickly I'll go back to a different topic that I see. If I'm not sure, again, I, I'm in the food one, but I forgot what do, what do they want to know about food. I can click on description um, to take me back to questions. And down there, at the very bottom, I can submit my own. So after I kind of vote and see ones I like and uh, contribute to um, the, the democracy of this particular one, I can submit one. And what are some ways that I can save on food? Something that I have a problem with is I, my fruit. I leave my fridge because I start eating cookies and during the day instead of my fruit. So making sure I eat all my fruit so it doesn't go to waste. Uh, sure, up here, if you ever accidentally clicked on the wrong one, I can change to a different topic. And then I make sure I'm being who I want to be if I wanted to change it. Uh, you know, if your whole student's name on there and you didn't want them to have that, you know, if you wanted to make sure they just had first name, you can change that. And I can submit right there, and it pops up now. Uh, but it's go down because nobody's voted it yet. Um, so that is this is an example of, of kind of a, a bigger one, and those are just the basics that you can do: voting on it, skipping it, flagging it as inappropriate, submitting my own question. And then I can see up at the top my contribution. So I can always go back and see what did I vote on again and what was the question that I asked. So principal interface um, in terms of going topics, again, all within one moderator series. And you'll check out up here, it creates its own unique URL um, that can be shared um, with other people to uh, get more contributions to the ideas. Um, so another example, kind of in not quite in the education realm, but two really interesting examples um, on a wider scale of how this tool has successfully been used with a lot of users. Hit start. Um, go ahead and play with that at your leisure. And let's take a chance to have you guys come in. Um, just in case, I'll go ahead and pop, pop this into the chat. And this take you um, to the demo that I've created for us to go in and um, start asking questions. And again, this is a series that you're popping into that I've created. Um, and then you'll see different questions that are in it. So click on this, and you'll see um, the home page that I've created. I've put a YouTube video in there that you can see um, kind of a brief overview of uh, what a moderator is. And um, you can kind of see the State of the Union down here, what's already happened with my moderator series, and not too much so far. I, I've got three out of three votes, and those are all mine. Um, it reminds you this is what you look like, so you and your students can always make sure that they're posting as themselves. And, um, and you can change that right there. So um, what you might want to do 
is as you first get to this page is put how to appear to others. It's, it's a theme and where you're from. And then we're going to go ahead and view the ideas that are already there. You can see that I've created two topics for my series. Um, I've created a series just for our webinar, and then I left two topics for the series. I've one for ideas for the classroom, and where you can oh good, we've already got people popping in from Portland, Oregon, and uh, for my family friends. And we have a second one for questions about moderator. Um, so two different stuff, and you can see how as a classroom teacher. Um, how this could easily be organized into different, if you're reading different novels, uh, maybe an editor teacher, you have you know, four books going on at once. You could have a different topic for each one, and within that, students can go in and ask questions about the main character, um, you know, Catch-22 or whatever it might be, um, and that's one way that you could do it. And so let's see, if we have ideas for the classroom, I see that Shay um, has asked a question. And I always change it. So if I got a student who maybe posted um, in a different area, I can go to admin and I can say, oh, that's a question, or oh, that's something about the Catch-22 novel we're reading. I can move over to questions. Now I go over to questions. Oh, we lost Wendy, so hopefully Wendy will be able to dial back in. Um, uh, so was going to be uh, dialing in just right now, but she was uh, showing you that moderator page. So if you guys want to pop in, and uh, I will put the link in that has the link to her. I'll put in her resource site again, which links to moderator pages. Let me pull them up. Um, let's see here. I will that link into the box. So if you want to start asking questions on that moderator page or just plant it, I am right now putting it into the chat box. So it's uh, goo.gl slash capital G lowercase d capital R capital G lowercase q. So you should be able to um, that's her moderator page right there. And Wendy, is that you that's back? It lands. Can you hear me? Oh, wait. Yes, I can. I was just sending out the link to the to your actual moderator page that was on your resource site. Great. So if anyone has any trouble accessing that, go ahead and pop that in the chat box. That uh, should take you to that home page. And again, to get to one of the topics I set up, whether it's questions or ideas for the classroom, and um, put it there, and now you, you can start to be part of this little democracy we've got going on for webinar this afternoon, and you can start to kind of vote and see which one that you um, want to talk about. If you want to enter a question, right here at the bottom, you can submit an idea. So if I'm in questions, uh, I can kind of, and you can help your students uh, kind of understand the, the link is making sure in the topic they want to, because as you saw, you can make quite a few topics on the left-hand side. So just make sure the one that you want to submit a question or an idea to is highlighted. And then you have to submit an idea. And um, in this case, it'll be a question. We'll use our last. And I'll press it. And you'll see it pop up. And it'll down to the bottom. Uh, so if you see it disappear and get worried, um, it just floats down to the bottom until it gets votes, and it might stay there. And um, uh, we can then go through, and now it's votable um, right here on the right hand side. Um, so, great, I'm seeing it getting populated with a lot of questions, and I can go through and see some questions that I can even answer right now. So, I'll go ahead and click that. Um, you don't need a Google account to vote, you do need one to keep track of your series. If you check up here on the right hand side, um, I go to my series page. I, mean, I think you do need a Google account to vote. vote. As I'm, yes, I think you do now. So I just I just posted a response in that moderator page. But yeah. 
because uh, I thought, well, what it, so if you do anonymous, you still have to be logged in. And submit, you can vote anonymously and submit anonymously, but you still have to be signed into a Google account in order to to vote. Oh, did it change? Or, or I, I don't remember, but I know that that's the case right now. Cool. So you do. Um, thanks, Dana. And, but it also allows you to keep track of your series and your signature. This is kind of the home page um, of, of your Google Generator. And you can always get back to this by going to home or my series or clicking on the link um, in the left-hand side. And you can see ones that aren't mine that I've viewed before in the past. You can pull featured ones like Ask Elmo um, and other things that, that float up to the top. And mine on the right-hand side. And then an easy button to create a brand new series. So you can just keep on making them. And you can go back and edit them afterwards if you want to add new topics, take away topics. But that's a little bit about the home page of my series um, when you are logged in. Okay, and we'll head back over to page, and again, you can go to some really cool ideas already starting to pop up. Again, you can kind of see if you want to flex something. If you see something ever that um, you know might not be appropriate, you know, we got me asking a question about. If I want to go see this weekend, if you as a teacher deem that as inappropriate, you can get it as inappropriate um, right here. I'll do that to poor Maureen because she has a perfectly appropriate question. But I can come over here and you'll see only as the moderator owner, I can see flags that I can review. And nobody's flagged anything, so I'm good to go. Um, if I did flag something, you move it and say, no, I think that is an okay one. Thanks, though, Dana, for you know, thinking about that, I, I think I'm going to approve it. And then you'll see ones that you've rejected before. So again, this is kind of the review and flag zone. And to flag one, it's other, other ones um, that allow you to do it right there. And let's see. Yeah, I think I like this one. I can show a little bit about flagging. How would a CSV file best be utilized? That's a good question. And so I voted for all of them, so it lets you know at the end that uh, now you can kind of see the state of all our um, ideas for the classroom. And she'll go through. And so, you know, Wendy, it seems like there's a bit of a lag. We're still seeing the screen where it's looking at the series I've recently viewed of your on your Google Moderator page. So there's just a bit of a lag, I think, in in, uh, in the screen sharing, just so you're aware. Okay. Maybe while we're waiting for it to catch up, there was a question um, about the flashcard on the your resource page. Apparently, it wasn't um, it showing up, so or it's not shared. So, do you know if that's accessible, or maybe it's just a, a, a bug of this particular link? I have to check with the share of, of those flashcards, so I'll ch double check on that. So. Um, yeah, I'll put a, maybe a note on the resource page that with an update. I'll find out. And caught back up to the ideas for the classroom page. You know, we aren't. But if uh, I will, I will put the link to the. Is this? Are you going to be in the slides or in just the screen sharing? Or people just navigate to the um, to the page. Yeah, um, navigate to the page for now. Well. Um, we're going to go to the slides and just to, just to see, but we'll um, spend some time in here for a little bit longer. So I'll send out that link to the ideas for the classroom in the chat box for everybody to follow along there. Great. Some time for people to um, vote, skip, flag, or um, say no to some of the ideas and the questions um, that are popping up. And so you might have, if you have something like a brainstorm, like ideas, you can see how students could then post a response to it. So now can they vote for it? As a teacher, I can post a response to it. I can share it, and I can, um, I can, and I can move it around. Um, so you can, if you have a response, um, you can always, um, you know, part of the discussion as well. And let's see, are my slides showing up now, Dana? 
He is going to switch you off and switch you back so you can sh reshare out. So uh, you should have the ability now to share that application again. I think it might have just gotten hung up, so hopefully this looks a nice little refresh. Okay. Are we all sharing my examples? Oh, great. We are all caught up now. Okay. Uh, so we'll we'll head back to the moderator, but I wanted to give you a chance to not only see some examples of it, but then actually go in and see what it's like to be a part of a topic or be a part of a question um, and vote and flag it as you see fit. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about classroom examples, and I'm already seeing some really good ones show up on the moderator. Um, but one that's really powerful is debate, and so um, if you have you know, if you're prepping your students for debate, for a Socratic seminar, for, um, you know, a, a, a controversial issue that you want them to then, you know, write a persuasive argument about, it's a great way to start collecting that in a, uh, you know, non-threatening environment. And then um, what I like to do is, um, and I'll show you presenter view, it kind of removes everything away from it, and so you just have this really nice, nice presenter view of, of your topics. So if I head on over to presentation view, I don't know, did it pop over pretty quickly to the moderator? We're doing that just okay. fine. Great. So let's say I had a classroom debate. Uh, I set one up, and now it's Monday morning for homework. I had them all you know, take part in the debate, vote on which ones they wanted to talk about the most, post responses. Now I can go to my topic, and I can click right here on presentation view, and see it's a nice, clean, separate box that pops up. It doesn't have the menus on the side, and it's an easy way to um, quickly sit down and, and go over questions, vote, and um, see big ideas quickly. You can see how this can really help out in meetings or any kind of class discussion. The presentation view um, is one of my favorite features because it does kind of take it away from the application and make it super easy to put up on a projector. Again, to get there, you've got popular ideas and then the presentation view. So I can open and close that view um, whenever I want. It's got a nice little uh, um, summary up there at the top. So for a debate or anything like that in the classroom, that's a nice, easy way to um, discuss around it. Um, council, so if you lead any kind of advisory or council team, a great way to create issues. So at the beginning of the year, if your student council team uh, comes up with they want to start recycling, they want to you know have a create hair day, things like that, they now can um, solicit responses from the student body. They could use it just for them to discuss and vote. Um, so really powerful way to use it with students councils as well. Agenda items, I know this is um, something that we tried at my past school, um, was letting agenda items uh, be shared out with, with the faculty beforehand, a week before some of the things that wanted to be discussed. But as we know, at faculty meetings, you've got 45 minutes and three hours of, of topics and questions and anecdotes. So um, Google Moderator can be a great way to create a series. You can create a series for um, all faculty meetings on the left-hand side for the topics. You can create them a month or however they happen, or you can create one just for that meeting and have topics that are um, just pertaining to that meeting. So, um, you know, what agenda I meeting, whatever it might be. Um, sometimes just giving it a try, you know, for one meeting with, you know, with your administrator or, or you know, with a small group like your fourth grade teachers. Seeing how it goes, and um, it's, it's really neat to see teachers and students um, line. When you put that presentation view up, they can say, "Oh, that's my question," and um, and they can see that you know they they know that the questions that were voted on are what they discussed. That there's um, they, their voice has been heard, and they've had some choice in the process. Um, set questions before exams. We talked a little bit about uh, the anonymous feature. Um, and this is a great way for um, you know that bio exam coming up for midterms, and you've got students who still quite don't understand meiosis, uh, you know, but they might be embarrassed to raise their hand and say, "Can you tell me about that third phase again?" This is a way that they, they can submit 
uh, and they can also submit with their name as well. But it gives a chance for other students to respond. Um, so you can let the let the reviewing fly and you know say tell students to you know for homework or during class they can respond to three other um, questions or topics um, within the series for your review question. And not only are is your student who maybe was um, you know apprehensive before about sharing it, but then everybody is getting a chance to review and students get a chance to teach about it, which um, as we know is one of the, the best ways that you can um, actually and, and remember things that you're learning. Uh, brainstorming ideas, that's what we're doing right now, right? We're brainstorming ideas for how we can take this tool into the classroom uh, for department meetings as well and student clubs and organizations for brainstorming. Uh, and the resource repository, um, I, I've seen a couple of really cool examples of, of teachers creating a, a series and then within it putting, um, you know, a YouTube video about uh, what it might be. It might be a cool new tool that uh, teachers can use in the classroom if you're a tech coordinator. And then um, other teachers can respond to that resource, uh, the uh, attached YouTube feature um, to a topic or to a response. A great way to to share resources or websites, and then have conversations off of that. Um, suggestions and recommendations. It's a great way after um, after an event, or um, you know, suggestions for you know um, the school dates or other things that that you want to get a lot of people voting on. There's other ways to do it too. You can make a Google form and have it be a lot more formal. But this is a nice way to um, let people have an added element of interaction activity on it. And then we're using it um, as an event Q&A for webinars, but you can see how it could be a Q&A even during a, a meeting or uh, some sort of event that's happening. Um, and especially if you're interviewing somebody, you know, that might be a, another cool example if you're going to be Skyping an author or you have um, somebody from, you know, the university come in and giving a presentation about something. Um, instead of, I know I've done it before with, you know, index cards, kids write out and anxiously hold it as they wait to get up and ask um, whoever your guest is in the classroom. This is a way that they can think about it beforehand, and they might only get a chance to ask three questions. Um, so make sure that the, the best ones get answered, just like our Google engineer wanted to make sure when he made this. Um, it's a nice way to make sure the most popular ones are Sounds like we might have lost Wendy again. Let me. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, everybody, and th thank you for being so patient with us when we're dealing with kind of these uh, technical difficulties. So, unfortunately, I won't be able to control her presentation here, but I can look at her slides that are also on her resource site, and we can go through some other of the questions that are on the moderator page. Um, so while we're waiting for Wendy to dial back in, I can answer some of the questions that I've seen there. So let me, oh, it looks like Wendy is back and I'm Wendy, back. is that you? <laughs> okay, great. Yep. Good to be back. Great. Okay, um, I know we're getting close to um, our chance for um, questions and answering some of those. So and the rest of the time just showing how do you create one. I've showed you one that's already created. Um, oh, and one more is, um, I don't know if my, let me make sure my slide, is my slide still showing? Are we on professional development? Yeah, I'm on professional development. Great, and this is an example. Um, I know we have Erin out there who is a, a recent Google certified teacher, but this is a, um, a really successful uh, example of how if you're planning a conference or some sort of professional development day, I know that um, you know we have, we have a faculty of a you know over 80 peers, and we wanted to get their input. This is a great way of getting ideas for uh, the actual conference. So at uh, this Google Teach Academy, there was an unconference day. So this is a great way to let people vote and have ideas about what they wanted to talk about. Um, so again, a great way of you know planning your PD days that you might have at your school site or at your district. Um, to ideas for what are the actual topics that you might want to cover. So that's a personal development example. Now we get to make one. So um, to actually make one, again, we're going to create the moderator series. We'll add some topics, share the URL, 
and then we can present it or we can answer questions for it. And to create one, we go to um, google.com slash moderators. Logged into your Google account, it will most likely prompt you, and you're willing to follow along. And we're going to go to create series. So you see, we've got a bunch there. We were playing earlier in the Democratize Your Classroom one, but I want to walk you through quickly before we do can how to create one. So where you can title it, so we can think about some of the ideas that we talked about. Um, and so if I did want to make one um, about our uh, class. I did it. Before I click, you can go to advanced right now or you can add more details later. So if I go to advanced, you have a lot more uh, opportunity to put information in. So I can put in the title. I got a space to put in um, a description and for our teachers out there and our um, admin, this is a great place to put your assignment details, right? So if this were a class debate page, I can, you know, choose Use your debate topic at the best and, and you know give a lot of uh, assignment instructions there. Here's where it's attached and it's accompanying YouTube. This might be kind of like State of the Union, where um, the actual series is revolving around a video. So if I am showing a debate that's happened already about uh, capital punishment, and I want my students to watch it, you know, as homework uh, and post their questions or ideas or responses. Um, this is a great way to kind of wrap the entire series around, um, you know, one thing. Or in case, how we put a Google Moderate video up, just something that's about the topic that you want to share. Um, so I can attach the video there. Here's where I can do my, my series visibility. Um, I can do public or just make it super as a link. And I'll talk about in just a moment how if you have Google Apps for Education, you can keep it within your main. Uh, I can create members of my series. And you can choose the actual uh, semantics of it. So some of you saw, and it, and it works for the whole series. So uh, if I want it to just be questions, I have to pick questions, and then I can decide if I want to call those things on the left-hand side topics, call them meetings, or I can call them events. So choose, um, in this case, their ideas or topics. So I'll say maybe I want them to do suggestions, ideas, and a topic about the debate. Here's where you can say, I want to have total control, and I will. I don't want anyone to look at them until I see them, um, or do duplicates. Somebody, you know, might be putting three or four in, and it kind of clogs everything up. You can also do phrases, so that's always a nice way to have the added element of security and, and uh, appropriateness. Is put if you're, um, you know, if you have a list, a blacklist at your school of terms that you know get then you can always copy and paste and put them in there. And here's where you need to decide if you want to let people do anonymous, anonymously or not, if you want to be able to respond with YouTubes. In this case, if it were a classroom debate, um, students, if I said yes, students could respond with a YouTube video that they found, um, maybe proving their point or an example of their point. So a good way to include some research skills in there as well. Um, and here's a big one too. You might not want to let your kids respond to the questions. And my, I wanted you guys to because you might um, have answers or you might also find somebody's example and say, oh, I've done that before or that's a great idea. Um, so varying levels of how much participation you want are here. So, um, and you can create series. So we got there by going to advanced right away with create series. But I also can always, um, I go home, I can write there edit. Series. I can always go back and, oops, I forgot. I don't want people to do this. I'm grading this. I need to know who's saying what. Then I change that right there. And see, there's my directions, and here's where we can start. We, the only topic right now is ideas. So if I want to change that topic, I can click. And so if I'm having the classroom debate, this one might be one like, you know, cap punishment or something. I might be having a debate. On. Here's where you can set the start and uh, end time, right? If you go into edit your topic. So if I just want them to be doing this for two days before the debate, and I don't, don't want people going back in and uh, contributing to it, I would change that here.
We lost uh, Wendy again. So, you know, we actually only have about seven minutes left in the webinar. So if you guys want to ask questions either using the WebEx interface, you can ask in the Q&A box, or if you prefer, you can ask directly into the monitor question uh, box that I've been uh, looking at. Uh, let's see. Is that is it, uh, uh, Wendy? I won't tell Wait. you who my provider is so that I, <laughs> uh, that's dropping me today, but thanks, John. It sounds like we're um, moving into questions. So um, again, uh, if you put into the box, we can answer it, and we can head on over and see which questions kind of rose to the top as we're running out of time. Um, is moderator going to survive the Google Labs cut? And it sounds like, from what Dana said earlier, this got graduated out of labs. So um, I think we're going to be pretty safe. Is that a good assumption, Dana? Yeah, so although there are some changes, so there's another question here uh, that is relevant to that, which is about um, using Google Monitor within your app's domain. So right now, we're actually going through a transition of the Google Apps account infrastructure. So some of you might have already gone through this transition where you can now use your Google Apps account to access things like Google Maps or Google Reader or iGoogle or uh, Google Books. So it allows you to access the additional Google services using your regular Google Apps account. So if you have transitioned your domain into this infrastructure, you will be using the Google Monitor that you're actually seeing Wendy use right now. It's just going to be the same flavor of Google Moderator. So we're not going to be having separate Google Moderators for your domain and this more public version. So that's one change to be aware of. So uh, Google Moderator will no longer be available as a lab within Google Apps, but it will be available to access with your Google Apps account as an additional Google service. Great, Christina. Um, looks like some questions from here. Um, an answer. Does it work with domains? Um, what a CSV file best to utilize for is a great question. If if you look up here on the left, we have export series as a CSV. I um, will give you a nice quick little um, file for that. And that could be an easy way to um, uh, order your data and get it in a form that can be shared and um, you know analyzed and printed a little bit better. And I know that that's what we've used it for. Did you have any other uses that you've seen um, within Google that's been a popular uh, way for the CSV file format, Dana? Yeah, I, I haven't. Um, I actually rarely use that functionality, so I, I don't know of any other instances. I have two other questions that came via the chat. Um, is there a way to share moderator series that different teachers have created? You know, that is an excellent idea, and the probably best way to do that is maybe to create a, a meta moderator series where teachers can submit their moderator series and have other people vote on which ones are better. But at this time, no, we don't have a way to do that, but it is something we can definitely investigate and be able to share. Another question on how long will it be just beta, and it's actually not in beta or in labs. Google Moderator is a fully launched product, uh, so so you don't have to worry about it going away. And then we have another question here about what is the difference between uh, with writer and blogger and groups? So um, they're quite uh, uh, similar in the regard of allowing people to kind of communicate information broadly to a group. Uh, in moderator, your the specific functionality there is that you can vote on responses and on questions and topics, and the primary purpose of it is to surface the most popular information to the top. So, blog, you can add comments to a blog post, but I don't believe that your voting will impact, you know, how the comments appear. And finally, groups is a great way to communicate with people. People can post responses, but they can't necessarily vote on those responses. Um, Moderate also is, is that YouTube integration, so you can be able to include videos as responses or videos on your home page. So there's some, some benefits there. So hopefully that kind of helps spell the difference between those. Do um, you have any additional questions coming? I, I, oh, we do have a, we had somebody who asked about adding a video within the question, and, and Wendy showcased that when you go to the uh, administrative settings of the series. You can add, allow 
the people need to um, include a video. Um, let's right. see. And you can also post a response with it as well if you let that as, and in this case, I turned that off so you don't see it. But if I turned it on, so you were responding to it, would see uh, right above that attach a YouTube video. And another question um, that they be answered that you can embed it into a site. Um, a quick site, um, just for right before we leave, just some other advanced tips. We already went over most of them, uh, phone questions, anonymous questions. But when you embed to a site, you can go to Insert, Gadget to your page. You'll see Google Moderator pop up under Feature. You don't even have to search for it. And you'll just put a URL right in there, and you can choose the size. And um, people actually vote directly within the page. They don't even have to open up a brand new one. Just like all Google Sites embedded tools, you don't have to go somewhere else to do it. It's right there in the page. So that's a nice way, especially if you're creating a unit or a class site, Google Site around what you're I think we lost one again. It looks like her video feed had stalled anyways. But basically come to the end of the webinar. I saw a question here about comparing Moderator with IdeaWare. I'm actually not very familiar with that service, but um, Wendy and I like, will confirm after the webinar, and we'll send out a, a transcript to this Q&A. And of course, you can also post them on that Moderator page, and we can respond there as well. So thank you again for everybody for joining us today. And uh, we will be sending out the recording to this webinar, and you have the link to Wendy's um, slides and resources as well. I'll send the link out to that later this week, and also the question and answer transcript. So, and thank you everybody for joining us today, and we look forward to um, seeing you at a future webinar.